Fish Time with IPJ, my man, John Bucket Timer! Hey, Bucket, how the hell are you doing, baby? Ian, you don't get to know about that because we don't have time for the chit chat, the chat shit, the shit shit, the shit chat. We don't have time for that. I am locked and loaded. I've got so many Champions League plays. We just need to get into it. This is the Eric Gooderson episode, baby. Oh yeah, baby, let's load it up. It is a Champions League special. Therefore, I will be speaking incredibly fast today. So if you need subtitles, producer Jeff is <laughs> your fucking guy. Buckets, uh -huh. let's get into it. The Champions League is back. We're in a new stage, a new format of the Champions League. And so far, it's working out pretty well. But before we get into what's happened most recently, I want to go back and have a look at the futures, how they were previously to match day one and how they're sitting now. So if we begin with pre-match day one odds on who's going to win it all, here is a look at the numbers and how things stood. Manchester City, obviously, favourites at plus 250. Arsenal, plus 800, was pretty sexy. Real Madrid, plus 300. Buckets, plus 1,200 for Bayern Munich before a ball was kicked. And now, let's look at who's the favourite. Manchester City at plus 275. Real Madrid, plus 370. Where is Bayern Munich? They've dropped down to plus 900. Anything changed for you there, Buckets? I am a little bit shocked that Barcelona is still plus 800 because holy shit, do they look just unstoppable right now. They stomped Real Madrid and El Clasico. They beat the piss out of my boys from Bavaria. I think plus 800 is a steal for a little sprinkle there personally, Ian. All right, let's have a look at who's going to win the group stage. This was pretty interesting. We all were pretty high on Bayern Munich at plus 800. That has clearly changed. Manchester City plus 300. Real Madrid plus 500. Arsenal plus 600. Let's have a look at how it sits right now. And who's the favorite? Liverpool plus 280 for Liverpool. Manchester City, they're standing at plus 300. They remain the same. Arsenal have dropped down. They have now gone to plus 500. Real Madrid plus 700. Barcelona are at now plus 800. And 50. Now, John Bucket Timer, Barcelona, as we were looking at it, they were plus 1,000, dropped to plus 850. They seem to be doing pretty good for you. They seem to be doing pretty well. I'm a little shocked that Liverpool is plus 280. Their next two Champions League matches are against Leverkusen and Real Madrid. They could very well drop some points there. That's a number I would stay away from. But again, Barcelona's, I think the phrase is tickling my fancy, is looking pretty good at plus 850. Keep your private life to yourself. Let's get into who's going to finish bottom of the table. We were both pretty high in Slovan Bratislava. The odds tell us that plus 400, it was obviously sitting bottom of the league. And then we had Red Star, Dinamo Zagreb, Sturm Graz. And uh, guess who's sitting there? And there's a new one that's actually dropped in there. Salzburg were plus 5,000 before a ball was kicked. Wow. They are now sitting at plus 275 to finish bottom of the league. Slovan Bratislava have moved down to plus 200. That's pretty interesting though, right? Salzburg dropped from plus... 5,000 to plus 275 to finish bottom of the Champions League. It's very interesting, but it is also makes sense when you look at the rest of their plays. They've got to play Feyenoord, Leverkusen, PSG, Real Madrid, and Atletico Madrid. They were supposed to get their points out of the first three matches, and they got zero. So it's going to be very tough for them. I still think Sloven finished last, though. Let's have a look at how things sit right now in the Champions League. Obviously, after three match days, Aston Villa, Liverpool, Manchester City, the three from Englandshire are all top of the Champions League right now. And qualifying straight to the round of 16. Remember, this group right here doesn't need to go through a knockout stage. All of these teams who finish in the top eight will go straight to the round of 16. They will get a period of time away from the game. Interesting to see Brest Buckets, who are sitting there, and Leverkusen, who are there. Sporting have creeped in there as well, but it looks like Amorin is going to be gone um, early November, so it's going to be difficult for them to obviously maintain. They've got Manchester City coming up next. Buckets, your thoughts on the top eight? My thoughts on the top eight are we are missing about half the teams I thought would be there, but this is the new format. It's going to take a bit for teams to figure out what's going on, and it's going to take us a bit to figure out what's going on in these matches. Real quick for you, Ian, here, because mm -hmm. you know I love my boy Victor Gilkera so much. Does he leave with Sporting's manager to Man United? I mean, it seems the perfect move for him to go to Manchester United, but the problem is United have spent a lot of money on Hoyland. They've spent a lot of money on Zerkze to bring them to the club, but a new manager comes in with new ideas, will absolutely want key pieces to their puzzle. Giocares, with the goals that he's scoring, is someone he's going after. Watch out for a player who plays in the centre-back position called Ignacio. 
outstanding player. He seems to be the guy that Amorin builds around coming out of the back. Obviously, he's done so well in the Champions League so far. And then we know the guy, Debast, he scored an absolute banger of a goal from the back line as well. Recent addition to Sporting. I'm interested to see if he will eventually end up there. Let's have a look and see who's sitting at the knockout phases. Arsenal, Barcelona, Dortmund, Real Madrid, Benfica, Juventus, Lille and Feyenoord in the top half. And of course, in the bottom half, it's Atalanta, Stuttgart, Paris, Celtic, Sport, Sparta, Prague, and Dinamo. And then it's uh, Bayern Munich, of course, who are sitting in 23rd right now, <laughs> interestingly enough. And Girona, who are in 24th. Obviously, 9 through 16 would have the advantage in the knockout stage for the home tie. And then uh, 17 through 24 would have the advantage in the knockout stage for, obviously, the, the less beneficial away tie. Um, and then the elimination places. There's some big teams who are sitting in the elimination places, including AC Milan, Atletico Madrid, PSV Eindhoven, Bologna are in there. Leipzig are in there in 31 spot right now. And then, of course, the one who went from plus 5,000 to finish bottom of the table to now sitting at plus 260, I think it was, for Salzburg. They are 34th, zero points, zero wins, minus nine goal difference, only beaten by the team we all predicted to finish bottom, Slovan Bratislava. Your thoughts, Buckets? My thoughts are that all of Germany is pissing me off right now. The fact that the second team in the Bundesliga is, what is that, 21st right now in Champions League? The fact that the best German team, okay, is Leverkusen, then Jeff's Dortmund, we're doing this wrong. Bayern Munich, be better. Leipzig, be better. I want to see all German teams advancing, and we are not looking at that right now. All right, let's get into it. Tuesday's games coming up are really eye-opening. we got a banger, PSV Eindhoven against Girona. I think the biggest game that looks out there is Celtic against Leipzig. Only joking. There's some big ones, including Liverpool against Leverkusen, Real Madrid against Milan, Sporting against Manchester City, Amarin, the new Manchester United boss, taking on Manchester City before he fucks off and takes all the money and goes to Manchester United and turns that club around to be once again kings of Europe. Uh, let's have a look at Wednesday's games. We've got Club Brugge against Aston Villa. We've got Bayern Munich against Benfica Buckets. The games don't come easy for them. Salzburg trying to get that first point on the board away to Feyenoord. Then we've got Inter against Arsenal. Arsenal just losing their sporting director, the guy behind the scenes, Edu. He's decided to leave the football club and it looks like Arteta could be following him very quickly. PSG against Atletico Madrid who can't get things right. Interesting story though. Diego Simeone's son scored for obviously Atletico Madrid this past weekend and then Stuttgart against Atalanta. Between the two games buckets, is there any games that catches your attention? Oh, there are absolutely some games that catch my attention here. Obviously, I'm big on this Bayern Munich game because I'm just so nervous at this point. We should beat Benfica by four or five goals, which means that game might end nil-nil. Very tricky to predict. The one I'm most excited about more than anything, if I'm being honest, though, is Sporting versus Manchester City. I'm really curious to see how these two big Scandinavians play and if we can see some good Gilkeras and Erling, Erling ugh, Holland action in that one. Those are my favorites. We're going to go to the UEFA Europa League a little bit later on, but Buckets, we're going to go straight into your bets because I know you were very hungry about the Champions League. <laughs> you were excited about the Champions League and you wanted to bet on every single game. So instead of doing that, we're going to go to the bets now. Welcome back, everybody, to Buckets Hits the Big Time. It is, of course, stoppage time, and it wouldn't be an episode of stoppage time. If we didn't get the best bets from our betting expert, that is, of course, John Buckets fucking I'm our Buckets. I'm looking for four best bets on Tuesday's games, four best bets on Wednesday's games. Then we're going to turn it around and have a look at what's happening on Thursday in the other competition. So let's begin with Tuesday's games first and foremost and get your first best bet. There are a ring of games, a number of games. I don't want to waste time. Take it away. I am going to that team that is currently barely favored to finish last on the table, Slovan Bratislava, hosting Dinamo Zagreb. And I'm going from Slovan Bratislava to just continue to get mauled in these matchups. I'm taking Zagreb over one and a half team total, currently priced at minus 105, which was a little shocking to me. I know Dinamo Zagreb hasn't been the best team either domestically or in this competition, but they've been one of the best teams at scoring at least two goals. They scored two against Monaco in their draw. They scored two against Bayern Munich, albeit when they lost 9-2. And they also scored two against Salzburg. This is a team that in both of their Champions League games on the road, they've been able to score two against significantly better defenses than what Slovan Bratislava has to offer. Bratislava at this point has to go for it at this point. You've got to get goals. You've got to do something. You cannot sit back and park the bus. Playing for a nil-nil does nothing for a team like Slovan right now. So in front of their home fans, I think they're going to be fired up. They're going to go for it. And when you go for it against Dinamo Zagreb, like we've seen against every team so far, you're going to get your ass kicked on the counterattack here. So I love that team total, Ian, at almost even odds. 
Yeah, no doubt about it for Dinamo Zagreb. It's a massive game against Slovan Bratislava, who were voted to finish the bottom of the table. Um, these are the games where Dinamo Zagreb have to score goals because next up for them is a home game against Borussia Dortmund. Then they're a home game against Glasgow Celtic. And then they've got an away game against Arsenal. So these big games coming up for teams like Dinamo Zagreb are so massively important. If you look at the table position right now for Dinamo Zagreb, there's a real opportunity to remain in the knockout stages as well. And if they pick up three points, they put themselves onto seven points. And seven points right now almost gets you into the top half of the fucking table so really there's a big opportunity for them to spring a surprise and do something special there love this bet love this play i think this one could have games because slovan bratislava will see this is their opportunity to score goals and try to get away from the bottom of the table as well buckets let's go to your second best bet for tuesday's games for my second and actually my third best bet here, Ian, I'm on the exact same game with different wagers because I told you I absolutely adore this sporting versus Manchester City game. The battle of the mm. Scandinavian giants. I love Erling Holland. I love Victor Gutierrez. But this is one of those matchups that's very tricky because when you have so much attack power on the pitch at one time, I wouldn't be shocked if this game ended 4-3, but I also wouldn't be shocked if this game ended 1-0 or 1-1. Very cagey, very tight. No one wants to make that first mistake, but as long as Sporting is better than Bournemouth, they should be able to take some points off of City here. I'm going to start, though, with Erling Holland anytime goal score. I don't know how you bet on anything else on Man City right now. 11 goals and nine games played. He is that guy. He's the big man up front. He's the cyborg. He's whatever you want to call him. He's going to be the one that needs to put Man City on the map, especially with them struggling in form right now. And the second bet, Ian, I'm just going to go right into it, is the same thing for uh, sporting side. Victor Gilker is anytime goal scorer plus 180. As long as one of them score, you're pretty much okay here about even on profit. But I wouldn't be shocked again if you say Erling Holland and Victor Gilkeras both say, hey, everyone, let me handle this. I will get us the win. I will do it by myself because both of these players are good enough to do that. We saw Gilkeras over the weekend pick up a hat trick in 20 minutes. He's got 16 goals so far across all competitions. Absolute monsters on the pitch. And I just want to vote for the good players to be good, Ian. That's all I care about in this one. Yeah, I'd like to inform you that he actually has 16 goals when it comes to domestic competition alone, Gyoker. What he's done so far is pretty incredible. 26 years old, 16 goals in 10 matches in domestic play so far. He has got 20 goals across all competitions, including two in the Champions League from three games so far. Remember, we had a tip for him to potentially be the long shot candidate for goal scorer. Uh, in these big games, if you want to move to Manchester United and follow your boss, Ruben Amarim, to Manchester United, these are the games you might want to turn up in. So love that bet. And of course, Erling Braut Haaland, without him, of course, they're really struggling for scoring goals so I do think that Manchester City rely heavily on Erling Barrett Haaland to score the goal first and foremost I'm going to reply to everybody out there bet responsibly make sure these players are in the starting 11 before the bet goes be very responsible here don't place your bet before you even see who's in the fucking starting 11 be smart bet responsibly play with money that you can afford to lose don't be a fucking idiot buckets let's go to your last and remaining bet <laughs> on Tuesday I love you, Ian. Don't be a fucking idiot. Be responsible. Have fun. And for your last bet, don't forget to bet on Celtic. I'm looking at this matchup between Celtic and Leipzig. I'm taking a weird one here. Celtic to score in the second half is currently priced at minus 120. And the reason I'm doing this instead of something like Celtic team total or Celtic score in the first half is because Leipzig is just frustrating as hell right now. This Leipzig team is just so... I don't know the word for it. I, I'll think of something down the road. Don't worry. But this is a team that is playing defensively, which is not how Leipzig is supposed to play. In their nine Bundesliga matchups, they've only conceded five goals in those nine matches. And this is a team that is kind of playing for these cagey, weird one nil, nil, nil games. The big thing here you got to remember, though, is Celtic is not going to let that happen. Celtic at home is wild from what I've heard. I've never experienced it myself, but we've talked about it time and time on the show. Celtic is a team at home that they're going to get a goal no matter what. But I wouldn't be shocked if this is nil-nil at half, maybe even one-nil Leipzig at half, but Celtic is going to turn it on. And if you look at their last games, seven of their last 10 goals across all competitions have come from the second half. This is a team that knows how to turn it on in the second half when that first whistle sounds in. And I think they're going to give us a hell of a game against Leipzig. Yeah, listen, Celtic were very interesting. They played an undefeated Aberdeen side this past weekend in the semi-final of the League Cup in Scotland, and they won by six goals to nil. Celtic, obviously, in great form most recently. They won against Dundee 2-0. They won against Motherwell 3-0. Nil against Atalanta, which was a big result for them. And previous to that, it was a 2-2 in the league against Aberdeen, of course, top two teams in the Scottish Premiership right now. Love the bet, love the play. Of course, second half is going to be very important. Really interesting this past weekend, though. Leipzig against Borussia Dortmund, which was an incredible game. 
game and Dortmund of course went on to win that game uh, Leipzig for the first time this season failed to score a second half goal in league play which was really eye-opening to me because they're a second half team sometimes they leave it late and of course the buckets point it was pretty emphatic to see that but I do think that Celtic at home keep it close in the first game in the first half and then the second half they have an opportunity to really go for it that is it for Tuesday buckets let's turn our attention to what's happening on Wednesday because there's a string of big games to look forward to which is the first game you're going to on Wednesday I'm going to a game that the more I look at it the more it scares me a little bit but I'm looking at Stuttgart taking on Atalanta and I am betting that Stuttgart will not be able to strike lightning twice I think is the quote something like that there is no way Stuttgart can defend and beat up two big Italian giants in a row in Champions League I know they had that crazy victory against Juventus that saw me lose money because I was backing Juventus but I'm once again backing the Italian side I love this Atalanta team they are just Everything I want to see in a footballing squad. They go for goals. They do not slow down. They do not park the bus. This is a team that has the talent and has the attacking players to beat the best teams on the planet right now. Stuttgart is not a bad team. They are playing well. They are capable of playing defensively. And under their new manager, they're doing, honestly, very, very good this season. But I watched Atalanta rip Napoli apart 3-0 over the weekend on the road. And I know that this Atalanta side can repeat that against Stuttgart. I'm taking Atalanta draw no bet at plus 105 because if you ever give me Atalanta with that safety net of a push at plus odds, I really don't care who the opponent is anymore. I've got to take that bet. Very interesting. I find Stuttgart very difficult to beat, and I never, ever know which Atalanta side turns up against Napoli. They were terrific. Obviously, I'm expecting them to be competitive in European competition. They did great, obviously, all the way and breaking that Leverkusen record in the Europa League final last year. They were brilliant. Um, goal scorers, obviously, very interesting for this game as well. Uh, plus 135, Retegi. Dennis Unda for Stuttgart, plus 150. Adamola Lukman, who's been terrific, scored a couple of goals, obviously, against Napoli, plus 150. All of those on any time goal scorer list right there. Is there anyone in particular who can Catches your attention? Probably Lukman, right? Uh, it's either Lukman or I've really liked Redigui Red this season as well here. I'm looking at Atalanta goal scorers no matter what, though. Probably said that name wrong. Sorry if you're watching this. Yeah, love you. Love you, please. <laughs> you never fucking change. Uh, all right, let's move on to your second best bet. I will say this before we do fucking leave. Bet responsibly on that one because I'm not with buckets. I think Stuttgart are going to turn one over on Atalanta and they don't turn up on the game. All right, what you got for your second best bet? I fucking love that you disagree with me. This, oh, man. All right, next best bet. I'm looking at Inter versus Arsenal here. I don't know how this game's going to play out. I think this is going to be a very cagey, difficult match. If you look at the Champions League team so far, only four of them have not conceded a goal yet. Aston Villa, Manchester City, Inter, and Arsenal. And I think that will continue because I do not think both teams score here. And Ian, I would not be shocked if we did not see a goal in this matchup. Arsenal on the road are just frustratingly good at parking the bus, sitting back and playing for the nil-nil. And this is the kind of matchup where a draw is not a bad result for either team. Both teams would walk away, I think, pretty much ecstatic if they got a point out of this matchup, knowing that this is one of the hardest games going to have so far in the group stage. The draw is plus 220, but where I'm actually going is the first half draw, Ian, at plus 110. I just don't believe we're going to see much offensive action in this matchup. Neither team's going to want to make that mistake. And this is the perfect example of so many good goal scores on the pitch, but nobody actually going for goal. Give me the first half draw because I cannot differentiate these two sides. Yeah, I'm glad you actually ended up in the first half draw because I think there will be a goal in this game, not many. But both of these teams have played three games so far in the Champions League. Neither team has conceded. I think Inter have scored five and Arsenal have only scored three goals so far, if I'm not mistaken, which is incredible. Yeah, only three goals. I mean, it's crazy. They haven't conceded a goal. So where's that goal going to come from? Half time's a good play, right? Make it a KG affair. Second half, we see maybe a goal. A goal would be the deciding factor in this game. I do think we get one, though, Buckets. I'm just trying to figure out which team's going to win. If you were to favor one side over the other for our loyal listeners out there to be oh. maybe playing the money line, which way would you go? If I had to play something, I am playing the 1 0 inter money line here. I think, again, there's not really a better side, but home field advantage is going to play a massive role in this matchup. Inter Milan plus 155 on the money line. Arsenal plus 195 on the money line as well. And if you're looking for something pretty interesting, as Buckets pointed out there, um, the halftime result is where he's gone. All right, let's go to your next best bet on Wednesday, please. My next best bet is a controversial one, but it is one that I have been singing their praises, this club's praises now for the better part of three years. I'm looking at the matchup between Red Star, Belgrade, and Barcelona. And before I get to my bet, let me say this. Barcelona will win this game. They'll probably score eight goals, maybe four or five. They will absolutely dominate the side. But the one thing that I've said about Red Star, Belgrade since the beginning of time 
is when they play at home, they score a goal. That's there. They might just be one, but they will get that goal. Red star Belgrade has now scored in 48 of their last 50 home fixtures across all competitions. This is a team that just, it's what they do. It's a hard place to play. It's a bitch to travel to from what I've heard. I've never been there. Very rowdy fans, very tough environment to play at. Barcelona is better, but they're so much better that they'll probably be up three nil at halftime, sub out all their big guns, rest for the next game. Red star, get that cheeky little PK in the 88th minute, maybe the 90 plus second for stoppage time, but red star at home. I will always take to score no matter what, no matter who they're playing against. It's just what they do, Ian. Interestingly enough, they never scored against Inter in the Champions League. That was away from home in a 4-0 yep. defeat. They did score one against Benfica. Obviously, they lost 2-1 at home. And then they had a, a massive game for them against uh, Monaco, where they also got conceded five goals and scored one. So I, I like this one. Obviously, getting a goal is so important in this game. And I love how creative you're getting here, Buckus. This is, this is great. And I love the fact that you're eagerly hungry for placing wagers on all of these games. So let's go to your final one for Wednesday. For the final one for Wednesday, I'm going to a bit of a tricky one because it's not the big names that everyone wants to bet on. We've already talked about Man City and Barcelona, but let's talk, talk about Sparta Prague and Stad Brest here because Sparta Prague, I think I'm saying these right, is again, one of those teams that when they play at home specifically, you just don't want to mess with them. When they're playing at Stadion, Letna, there's no way I'm saying that one right. This is a team that just like Red Star Belgrade, that just like Celtic, that just like Ajax, that just like PSV, that just like Bayern Munich, when they play at home, they produce results. Maybe not produce results, but they score a damn goal, Ian. I'm taking both teams to score here because anytime I see Sparta Prague at home, Sparta Prague, Praha, I don't know. I bet on them to score because it's what they do. Looking at their recent home fixtures, again, not always winning, but they're scoring goals. They did get absolutely slapped by Man City in match day three, but they scored against Stuttgart and they beat Salzburg 3-0, which used to mean something, but not anymore, apparently. Stadbrest, not a bad team at all. They'll get a goal here, Ian. I'm keeping this one simple with both teams to score at minus 130. Yeah, let's not forget that Brest are in the top eight of the Champions League right now, which is pretty incredible. They're doing a great job, and uh, they're a difficult team to beat. They're obviously springing some surprises with the results that they've got so far, and uh, they're a team that have struggled over the last four games. They've only got the one victory. They have, however, scored in three of the four games. The most recent one against Nice, they lost at home against Nice in the league at the weekend. They were fucking shit in that game. I watched it, which was desperately disappointing. However... Anything can happen, as Buckets pointed out. Let's turn our attention to what's happening on Thursday's Europa League and have a look at the top of the table. Lazio currently top of the table, Tottenham second, Anderlecht third, Ajax fourth, Galatasaray, Frankfurt, Michelin, and Athletic Club Bilbao. Top of the table right there, Buckets, Lazio, and Tati Castellanos springing in a big surprise. He's looking pretty good right now. Are you happy with them top of the table? They got a chance, or do you think Tottenham are going to run over them? I think they have a chance here. Tottenham is still a team that I can't get a read on to save my life. All last season, I was betting both teams to score and over in every single one of their games. And now Spurs and Europa are playing defensive. So it's a tough team to bet on. But you know I'm backing our boy Tati. Lots who have looked tremendous, and he's a big part of that. I want to see them succeed. So I also want to see Galatasaray get up there. I think they could be a kind of dark horse contender in this one. I just want to remind everybody that Manchester United are currently sitting 21st in the Europa League table. <laughs> they have not won. They've drawn all three games. They've scored five and conceded five and a new boss in charge. Um, I wouldn't put it past Manchester United to finish in the top eight. I'm just throwing it out there. All right, let's go to the games that are coming up. There is one game, one single game on Wednesday. It's Besiktas against Malmo. And then we have obviously a full slate of games on Thursday. You can have a quick look at all of those games. I'm not going to go through them all because, of course, they're a pain in the ass. Obviously, Rangers against Olympiacos, Roma's game against Union saint Joa. I think the biggest one that really stands out there, Buckets, in the first half of the early kickoffs is Galatasaray against Tottenham. That really catches my attention. And then Frankfurt against Slavia Prague. If you look at the later kickoffs, there is some big ones with Ajax. Obviously, an important game for them against Maccabi Tel Aviv. Azed Alkbar against Jose Mourinho and Fenerbahce is a big one. Hoffenheim, Lyon, Lazio, Porto, Manchester United, obviously a big game for them as always. And then Victoria Pilsen against Real Sociedad. Buckets, your two best bets for Europa League. Let's get to your first one. Let's talk about a team, Ian, that I know has pissed both you and me off greatly in the past couple of weeks. I'm on that matchup between Ajax Amsterdam, or Amsterdam and Maccabi Tel Aviv because this Ajax side just wasn't who they're supposed to be early this season. This is a team that has very high expectations and was consistently not meeting them. Then, for whatever reason, they got to the toughest part of their schedule where they play Karabag, Feyenoord, and PSV all within the same month, and they absolutely beat and slaughtered all three of those teams. They beat Karabag 3-0 on the road. They beat Ajax 2-0 on the road. And they barely ended up beating PSV, but gave PSV their first loss 3-2. This is a team that is finding their shooting boots, that is 
even though I don't want them to do well, is consistently doing well and consistently taking my money. So it's time I take some money back. Maccabi Tel Aviv is the second team in the Israeli Premier League. They are not a bad side, but being not a bad side in the Israel Premier League does not translate over to some of these big teams that you got to play. This should be an absolute smackdown from Ajax. So I'm taking an even money wager here. Ajax to score in both halves, Ian, is plus 100. I think Ajax probably win this one 3-0, maybe 4-0. But in case they play a little bit slower, I like the idea that a 2-1 or 2-0 can still cash this ticket. They haven't lost in 13 games, Ajax Amsterdam, and they've won 11 of those 13 games. They've drawn the other two. Pretty impressive. Really impressive. What they've managed to do to turn around things at Ajax has been pretty impressive. And unpredictable. I've spoken to you about this a number of times. I just don't know about this team. I don't quite understand. At some point, I think they're going to let us down. But they've got a new boss in charge, Francesco Farraioli. He's lost one game since he's taken over that football club. He's won 15 of 19 games since he's been in charge. And at only 35 years old, he's one of the more younger managers in European football right now. Love what he's doing love what ix are starting to do they're entertaining so love the play buckets where you going next the next one i definitely want your opinion on here because i'm going to a bundesliga side i'm looking at frankfurt versus slatvia praha here because frankfurt is a team that if they play their best 11 and if they try for 90 minutes they probably win this matchup 4-0 but we've seen frankfurt kind of play slow sometimes we saw that against rfs in the last match day where they only won 1-0 because they rested a lot of their goal scores for the bulk of that game but this is still the frankfurt side that just won 7-2 over the weekend against bochum this is still the frankfurt side that knocked gladbach out of the dfb pokal this is still a very very strong and very good frankfurt side but the problem is is we don't know who's going to start here regardless i'm still taking frankfurt over one and a half team total that's currently priced at minus 125, but I really want to see some of the big names in this lineup. I want to see Hugo. Wow, this is, I'm not saying this last name right. Ekatike? Ekatike? Oh, boom. I want to see Hugo play. I want to play, see Omar Mamrush play. I want to see Ansgar Kanaf play. I want to see these big names in the lineup, and I don't know if we're going to get that. But Frankfurt at home against a weaker Slatvia Praha team, I'm still going to take that over one and a half team total because even if it's 0-0 zero, zero at halftime and they sub in the big names in the second half, these guys can score two or three in just 45 minutes. What was the line on that over one and a half team total? Minus 125. Do you know what the money line is for Frankfurt? No. Minus 125. Thoughts? I've been burnt by too many weird 2-2 two, two draws here, but I do like it. I think Frankfurt win. I think they need to win. And I think that Honestly, slot beer going to hard time or have a hard time scoring. So I kind of like the money line there as well. Uh, Marmouche plus 130 on the money line. He's in double figures now in the Bundesliga already. He's been absolutely brilliant. I think he's got 12 goals across all competitions already. Hugo Ekatiki has been excellent, plus 180 on the um, anytime goal scorer list as well. Um, I love both of those players. I just think that they're far too good. The only problem I've got with Eintracht Frankfurt to buckets his point right now is they're flying high in the Bundesliga. They're third in the table right now in 17 points. They've lost only two games, and they've got a huge game coming up this weekend against Stuttgart away from home. So to Buckets' point, be careful who's in the starting 11 here because you have no idea what's going to happen. Those games coming up, maybe it's more important for them to finish in the top four because obviously playing in Europa competition, you'd rather be playing in the Champions League. So I think Frankfurt's goal this year is to finish in the top four, which would be an unbelievable achievement. Marmouche is doing a great job. And of course, that is important. Buckets, great job as always. I know you wanted to do absolutely every single game and we didn't get an opportunity <laughs> for chat chip before we started the show. So I'm going to finally check in on you. Recently on social media, you pointed out that you were going to take a bit of a break. It's always interesting to me when you post it on social media that you're taking a bit of a break, but you're doing it for the right reasons, which caught my attention. Taking care of the mental health. So here's my weekly check-in on John Pocket Seimer. How you doing, buddy? I am doing okay, man. I am not going to let our podcast ever get political, but Twitter is just a stressful place to be sometimes. I know that's a very, maybe it might sound insignificant, but when you are constantly looking at a screen and you're constantly seeing this flow of different comments and interactions, sometimes it's just not good for your mental health. It's really not. So I'm t putting the screen off for a bit. I will still always share our shows and tweet out our shows. I told everyone that regardless of any break, I could be dead in the ground and I'm still scheduling tweets from the coffin. I will always make sure the show gets promoted, but I just need to be off screens for a bit, man. It's just a tough time. It feels like. Yeah. There's also something positive happening in your private life right now as well. When you meet someone you <laughs> want to spend a lot of time with, I think it's important to obviously switch away from the screen sometimes and take a break. And you are someone who is so dedicated. I don't know anyone like you who is dedicated to providing wages for people out there majority of those wages are free you do have a dub club where people can go and subscribe please do so if you want some extra plays from buckets he puts plays out there daily that's hard work that's commitment and sometimes you've got to be very careful the most important thing is to take care of the mental health there are more important things than soccer in this world 
There are more important things than soccer bets in this world. There are more important things than obviously making money. You've got to be very smart. Taking care of the mental is so important for us here at Stoppage Time, of course. We want to make sure that people are smart, they're betting responsibly, they're doing things wisely. We don't just throw bets out at you. We're not just being irresponsible by throwing bets out at you. We gave you 10 plays today. But no, <laughs> we want you to win. We want you to do it with some knowledge and expertise. We don't win them all. We don't hit them all. It's impossible to hit them all. No one does. Anyone who tells you they do, they're a fucking liar. So don't believe them. Please make sure you look after yourself. I'm proud of you, Buckets, for always looking after your mental health no matter how long this hiatus from social media lasts because i feel like you're addicted to social media as well i bit. feel like you've got to just take a bit of a break switch your phone off and obviously enjoy a peace and peaceful period away from that and um, enjoy some time in your private life put your bets out on dub club put your bets out on stoppage time i know you're doing stuff on the early edge and doing a great job there but switch the fucking phone off man and enjoy life for a little bit can you do that for me I could definitely do that. Ian, I got to get your opinion on this real quick. I saw two comments about my personal life. One of them said, ever since Bucket started, and it was in quotes for some reason, dating, his plays have been much worse. He must be distracted, which is, to me, hilarious. But the second comment said, ever since Bucket started dating someone, Manchester City hasn't won a game. When they lost to Spurs, and then they lost to Bournemouth over the weekend. And I was like, I don't think that's correlated. But if it is, I got more power than I thought. Yeah, I think you've been dating a lot longer than you've let known as well. <laughs> I think so so too. I wouldn't worry about those types of things. But at the same time, no, nah, there's no nothing that obviously links it. You're obviously scoring off the field as you are on the field. Um, so happy for you, buddy. And I think everybody should be happy for you. Listen, a reminder for everybody out there: stoppage time is here for you. Champions League are special weeks for us. Please bet responsibly. Uh, big sh uh, shout out and thank you to our guy Jeff. Producer Jeff is just working his magic as always through the weeks. He's doing a great job, especially in those Champions League weeks. I always feel like he really gets into it as well you know he puts the shows out live on x it's fucking incredible formerly known as twitter i love to see those types <laughs> of things we average around about if you put all of the shows together on twitter on youtube we're getting way over ten thousand people watching our show seeing the stoppage time brand on these champions league weeks which is massively important for us obviously listen for everybody out there you have to understand we don't make any money from this we are obviously doing this for our passion project we do hope that we will find a partner very soon that we can put this project back on a good platform for you and obviously with a good sponsor so that we can all make a shit ton of money for it because we know it's fucking the best in the business buckets out there enjoy yourself make sure you enjoy the champions league this week thank you for all the hard work thank you for the eight best bets on the champions league thank you for the two in the europa league as well uh, producer jeff work your magic once again we look forward to seeing it on youtube please make sure you like subscribe and comment everybody out there have a great week this is the champions league baby this is a uefa week bet responsibly have fun enjoy the games and make sure you absolutely have it